All right, give me just a second. <clears throat> Okay, how are we doing now? How are we doing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Somebody please um, text me. Let me know that you can hear me. All right. Um, I'm here. This is Pastor James Thornton of the Salem Missionary Baptist Church. And um, just, just holler at me and let me know that you can hear me. I don't know what was happening with my other... Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, great, great. So apologize for being a little late. I'm going to work this situation out. I had hoped to have it resolved today, but that's how the adversary can be. All right. So how are you? Happy, um, happy Friday, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Thank you for being here. A few notices and announcements very, very quickly. Please um, join us on Saturday. Saturday will be our missionary luncheon. It will commence at 12 o'clock. So the time is not 11 o'clock. If you know anybody that is planning to be at the luncheon, just let them know that we will start at 12. I told you my heart is heavy. You know that we lost our neighbor, um, Tom Marion, wonderful young man um, who lost his life actually being a good Samaritan. And that service is going to be on Saturday. And so Mrs. Thornton and I, we need to be there. He's our good neighbor, lives on our floor, just a wonderful gentleman. So please pray for his family. Also, I was in touch with um, our niece, Pegues, on yesterday. She's a former member of our church. She and I grew up together. She lost her son. We want to be in prayer for her. One of my good classmates, Miss um, Gwendolyn Watts. Well, she's not a classmate. She's a student, actually, and she lost her son. So we want to be in prayer for her. Um, Please plan to join us for our worship experience on Sunday, which will commence at 1045. Lastly, um, I want to thank Sister Joanna Long, and she is doing all she can to help to raise funds and help us with the expenses of this ministry. I want to thank her so much. So there's a popcorn sale. So if you see the, um, the links coming from her, or from the church, you want to order some popcorn. You don't have to leave your house. Just click on it. You can send popcorn to your friends. Buy popcorn for yourself. Um, the, the prompts are there. If you don't see them there, just go to the Salem Missionary Baptist Church Facebook page, and you'll find them there. So won't you do that as we continue to do God's work? Listen, Jesus is Lord. He's Lord in a pandemic. He's Lord when there's crisis. He's Lord in good times. He's Lord in bad times. He's worthy to be praised. I hear Paul declaring in Romans chapter 8, what can separate me from the love of God? Neither death, nor height, nor principality, nor things that are, nor things are to come. Nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God through Jesus Christ. So let's work together. Let's not get weary. Let's continue to hold up one another because we are our brother's keeper. I will not hold you long today. I'm so delighted that you are here. And um, I promise you by when we come together on Monday, I'll have all of this technical stuff worked out. I may need somebody to make a contribution so that I can buy um, a new device. We'll see. I'll, I'll go get it checked out and find out what's happening with that. All right. I want to go straight to the word. <clears throat> we are continuing with Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. We know that the Philippian church is a church that the apostle Paul loved. And we have done chapter one, chapter two. And today we, could, we will complete chapter three. I shared with you yesterday that chapter three is perhaps my favorite chapter of all of the Bible. I like what Paul says, and I'll just start there. Paul says that if you want to talk about credentials, he says that he has credentials. He says, um, he says, I have reason to boast more than anybody else. He says, I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, in regards to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But Paul says, that's not important. But whatever things were gained to me, I count but loss for Jesus Christ. I consider everything lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing 
Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may win Christ. He closes this pericope of scripture by saying, not that I had already attained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold on me. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, as we conclude, Paul says this. He says, look, live and connect yourself with people who love Christ. Let me say that again. Live and connect yourself with people who love Christ. And Paul says that if you have learned anything, then you ought to be more mature. He says in verse 15, all of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. What view? To press the word, the mark of the prize of the high calling. And if on some point you think differently that this is not the most important thing, that too will God make clear to you. He says, only let us live up to what we have already attained. So the things that we have learned, the things that we have been teaching, things that we've been sharing with each other, don't just talk to talk, but let's walk to walk. James, the apostle James reminds us, be ye not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word also. And then Paul says, follow those who follow Christ. And Paul says, I am a model and we all ought to be a model of what Christ would have us to be so that people would see Christ in us. I'll talk about that some more on Sunday. You want to come. I have a word that God has given me for you, you, and you. He says, join together in following my examples, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. In other words, those who follow the examples of the apostle do that. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. There are many people who do and live and act contrary to the word of God. And Paul says, I tell you this with tears in my eyes because they are enemies of the cross of Christ. And therefore, that's why we have to let our light so shine. We have to show a contrast. We have to show that we are different. Can the world see Jesus in you? Can the world see Jesus in me? And we should not be upset that people see us as different. Yes, we are different because we are a royal priesthood. We are different because we've been washed in the blood of the lamb. And so we come out from amongst them and we are separate, said the Lord. Paul writes to the church at Rome and says, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. He says of those who are enemies of Christ, he says their destiny is destruction. Their God is their belly and their glory is in their shame. In other words, in the end, they will be destroyed. They're concerned about what they put in their bellies and they're concerned about material wealth. They're concerned about how people see them. They do not keep their eyes on the things of God. He says, their mind is on earthly things. But, verse 20, as I come to close, our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will conform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. God has great things in store for those of us who love him. My testimony continues to be the same. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I give him praise, I give him honor, and I give him glory. So if you're taking notes, 
we want to make sure that we live according to the model of Jesus Christ and that people can see Christ in us. We want to follow those who follow Jesus so that people can see that we are different. We've been called for such a time as this. If there's ever a time that we need to speak the things of God, this is that time. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word to so pregnant with truth and power that gives birth as we yet try to understand it. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you for a brand new day. We love you, we praise you, we honor you, and we give you glory. Remember those, oh God, that are bereft of spirit, those that have lost loved ones. We pray for Gwendolyn and for our niece as they have lost their sons. What an awful pain because children are not, parents are not buried their children, but children ought to bury their parents. But we know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot feel, cannot heal. We pray for the family of Tom Marion and the struggle. We don't understand, but we hear Paul declare, who has known the mind of God, who has been his counselor. But we submit ourselves to your will. Grant us your peace and help us to understand whatever it is that you're trying to teach us in this season. Thank you for how you've kept us in this pandemic season. We love you, Lord. We praise you, we honor you, and we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Um, I will let you know I'll be meditating um, over the weekend. I don't know yet whether or not we will continue with um, Philippians. We, we might because it's really speaking to me. I'll see how God speaks to me and I will let you know. But in the meantime, I, I want to ask that you would um, go ahead and read chapter four of Philippians. Let's just finish up this. I think we can do it. All right. Let's do that. The Lord is speaking to me as I yet speak to you. Thank you, Sister Jacqueline Wallace, for letting me know that you could hear me clearly. I'm looking at some of the comments now. Maxine, how are you? Sister Ruby Ramsey, how are you? Richard Allen, thank you. Mary Joseph, Valerie Ellis, Angela Kelly, thank all of you so much. Um, I might need somebody to give me a contribution so I can get me a new device. I'm working here for my computer. I actually prefer working for my iPad, but hey, we thank God for the technology. And, um, you know, I'm becoming pretty savvy on this. There was a time I couldn't move from my iPad to my computer without getting my executive assistant to help me. But, you know, we got to learn, we got to be open and you too can do this. And so let's continue to work together. I love each of you. Let me let you go. I need to get back upstairs to this reception. And then later this afternoon, I'll be um, at the 70th precinct. Um, where we will spend some time praying for our police officers and seeing if we can't develop a way to have better community relations. And then I will be going to the wake for, um, for Tom, Mary. And so pray for me, pray for my strength as I continue to pray for you. Let's receive the benediction. I like that benediction that's in the book of Jude. It, Jude is just one chapter. So if somebody tell you to read chapter two of Jude, they don't know what they're talking about. It's only one chapter. And he talks about the corruption and man's inhumanity to humankind and just how bad things are. He speaks almost as if he's speaking to us today. But then he concludes with this benediction, and I close now. He says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our savior, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever, amen.